Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload, as you can tell by the video, or by the title, is going to be about a, uh, a, a video where we discuss what the what a potential La Nina could mean for the winter. Now, um, I will be going through several of these series, or several of these videos in the coming weeks, probably, uh, because since right now, there's an even chance for any, really, right now. This is, by the way, this is not a prediction of any sort. If you comment that this is way too early and this is ridiculous, I mean, you're probably right. It is way too early to make any prediction. I'm not making any prediction. This is just speculation. I do this for the fun of it, and I just wanted to take you along with it. It really isn't supposed to be anything taken seriously, all right? Um, that's about as best as I could word it. Just don't take it seriously. It should be taken with a grain of salt. I know that usually people don't like to say that about their own predictions. But again, this is not a prediction. So, uh, go ahead if you want. Uh, click off the video if you don't want to watch this. That's perfectly fine. But if you do enjoy weather-related content, speculation, or just meteorology for the fun of it, consider subscribing, consider liking the video. This is what I like to do. So, we're looking at the probabilistic Enzo. Like, if you don't know what Enzo means, Enzo means ENSO. So, that basically stands for uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation. That's basically where the waters off the approving coast of South America are either warm El Nino, cold La Nina, or neither, which is neutral, hence the name. And basically, that whether or not you can see that, that area, if you were to look at a map, is right here. That's basically right there. And scientists uh, have been, and meteorologists have been studying this area for many, many years, uh, decades, and they've noticed that whatever the temperature anomalies are here usually tends to um, correlate to either cold, a snowy, a wet, a dry, a warm winter, whatever it may be at, you know, different locations across the United States. Uh, not just the United States, but uh, mainly the United States, it impacts uh, at the greatest, I would say, and during the winter time. So let's look at uh, what's uh, what's forecast to come. So uh, here is basically character uh, characterizations of these things. La Nina characterized by O and I less than or equal to 0 0.5 Celsius. Uh, if you're wondering what a O and I is, O and I is a period of more than three months. So that's what the O and I is. Um, the average of three consecutive months, that's the O and I. And O and I greater than or equal to 0 0.5 Celsius uh, positive is the El Nino. And anywhere in between those, that 0.5, negative uh, 0.5 is the neutral. And you may be wondering, well, that's not really much. So it will obviously mostly be either El Nino or El Nino. You, if, you were to, if you were monitoring this for, for many years or for quite a while, you would notice that, you know, neutral actually happens quite often. We don't really go much above, uh, you know, 0.5 or much below point, negative 0.5. Uh, the record El Nino, I think, was 2.5 uh, in 2015, you know, in the tube. I think it was reaching three, reaching for three. So, you know, while that is not really too significant in, uh, in, in uh, I guess, numerical order, three, it's not that high. But uh, in terms of this anomaly, it was very significant. So notice that, for example, last year, across fall, it was neutral. And it got into a weak El Nino. I mean, extremely weak, basically neutral, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. And that's why a little bit, some of the forecasts were a little bit wrong that I had quite a bit wrong, actually, especially for the East Coast. But, um, again, this is not really a forecast at all. This is way too early to have a forecast. And uh, you could say what you want. I just do this for the fun of it. I want to bring you along for this. And if you were to look at uh, the probabilistic Enzo outlook, so, you know, what's most likely to happen based on a climate prediction center. This was last updated on April 9th. This will soon be, uh, will be updated uh, across. This is always updated the second Thursday of May. And um, May this year started on a Friday. So not this Thursday, which just occurred, which is right now. I'm rather than recording this video. But uh, in next week, they will be updating this. And you can see that as of now, they have a neutral throughout most of summer and into fall. With pretty high confidence across summer, less into fall. But then we see a rising, a, a kind of rising El Nino chance as we push into winter slightly. A rising La Nina for sure. And a slowly declining neutral. So it's really, I mean, this is just a nightmare. Uh, right here is just an absolute nightmare. And if you were to look at this, you could see that the El Nino is pretty high. The La Nina is also pretty high. And neutral is pretty high. So 
Um, this is really tough to say which one will actually prevail, wh whether it will be a La Nina, an El Nino, or a neutral. So that's why in the coming months, weeks, I don't know, whenever I decide to make this, I'll be making a video about what does a neutral mean, what does a La Nina mean, what does an El Nino mean. And as today by the title of this video, you could tell it is about what a La Nina indicates for the U.S. Okay, and if you were to uh, notice, I would say it's either the chances are it's either going to be a La Nina or a neutral. I'm most likely one of those two. That's why today the La Nina is one of the first ones that I made in case I don't make the other two about the series, you know, because La Nina is most likely going to happen probabilistically. Again, it's will it does just because it's most likely doesn't mean it's going to happen. Um, so, if you were to look at uh, the the models, the individual spaghetti models, you can see it's just a absolutely ridiculous range. Anywhere ranging from a strong El Nino to a strong La Nina, really strong La Nina. Now, whether or not uh, this will, you know, whether or not or where this will fall will exactly determine where this occurs. So, notice these are the months. This is September, October, November, December, January. And if you were to look at this, you can see that the models show a decline from neutral or from El Nino into the neutral, well into the neutral, possibly into the La Nina. Several models into the La Nina range. La Nina is right there, 0.5. This is El Nino. So mainly it's actually in a neutral, some of the uh, the, the climate prediction center models. But if you were to look at the uh, uh, the CFS uh, forecast, you can see that it shows a pretty strong uh, dive into the south towards La Nina. So uh, you can see these models are actually way more agreement showing a La Nina and you could see this is where it was last year's so El Nino got down into a neutral and went back up throughout the winter into a El Nino. Now you could see that it's forecast to uh, uh, sharply drop across the next couple of months into portions uh, into the coming months of fall and winter into a neutral into a La Nina. So you may be wondering, well, what does that La Nina mean? Well, um, if you also I want to point out that look how chilly it's been across the United States. Very chilly and also pretty dry. Uh, so it's been pretty noticeable. Last 90 days, you can see it's been warmer, but not terribly too warm um, and colder as you go to the northwest. So interesting. There's definitely an interesting uh, winter or past uh, several months. Very interesting. Um, if you were to look at what a typical La Nina pattern is, you could see I just quickly typed up La Nina pattern, and really the one, you know, the images that show up are fairly good. Now they have also uh, they have um, they all have a little bit of variation depending on which graphic you use, you know, from which you know, say weather station, but um, you know AccuWeather will have it different from the Weather Channel. But notice that what they have here is uh, basically cooler across the north and west, and a little bit wetter and warmer across the south. So the cold air won't be as penetrative as, uh, say, during a neutral pattern across the eastern U.S., but it would be more cold and snowy across the northwest. So a bit similar as to what the last 90 days have looked like for the United States. If you look right here, it's colder across the northwest, warmer right here. Doesn't mean that necessarily less snow across these locations, as there could be some big storms that come up and interact with that, but that's, again, a crapshoot. Um, it's really uh, tough to predict those type of things, whether or not the conditions will set up for storms. So mainly, you know, the cold air would be centered across the nor northwestern United States, and it would be drier across the south and southwest, while it would be wetter and warmer across the southeast and east. Now, if you were to look uh, across uh, some other graphics, you can see that they're generally the same. Here's a better one, I guess. Wetter and warmer kind of collide with the polar jet, so that could lead to some snowstorms, but that really, again, is a crapshoot as, like, say, for example, this year, that didn't come true. So, uh, let's look at now what a neutral endo means. A neutral, uh, it leads to more of a, uh, you could see a colder pattern across the, uh, across the northeastern United States. And it's not really as centered across the West. Now, I will be getting more into detail on these, uh, say, on these uh, video, uh, on these, uh, on the neutral pattern and on the El Nino pattern in later uh, episodes. And I'll be showing you specific winters, how that looked like, and wh what they could be resembling to the upcoming winter. If you look at the historical El Nino and La Nina episodes, let's say, for example, let's choose out 2009-2010. This was, uh, well, this was actually El Nino, but it was a very snowy winter. It was very cold and very snowy, and it was a weak El Nino, so 
Um, and El Nino pattern kind of shows warmth across the north, and it was very cold across much of the United States, so it doesn't really, uh, you know, it's, it's not really end-all be-all of what's going to happen in winter, even if the Enzo is uh, El Nino. For example, if you were to look at 2013-2014 winter, very, very cold winter, 2014-2015, another cold winter for the northern and eastern United States, you can see it was a neutral and then an El Nino. So, La Ninas usually aren't really the coldest winters. Um, it seems that La Ninas are usually um, more kind of in-between winters, but there has been definitely snowier winters. You could see 2011, uh, t 2010 to 2011, uh, uh, it was a La Nina, and it had one of the largest blizzards on record during that year, the Groundhog Day blizzard, 2011 blizzard. Uh, one of, it was just a beast. I mean, we haven't had a blizzard like that since across the middle part of the country. Um, and then, so each year has its own characteristics. 2017, 2018, nothing really special about it. It was a pretty uh, mild winter across the north central United States, but it was a La Nina. So it's really a lot of differences, and I'll have to pull up on maybe on a future video, a comp you know, a compilation of all the years that were La Nina, and maybe that'll give us some more perspective. So if you'll enjoy this video, guys, consider liking this video, consider subscribing to this channel. And uh, again, basically what to take away from this video is that if La Nina were to occur, it would be uh, a definitely an interesting winner and it would be a significant player. But uh, it would be, again, not the end all be all of all things. But this is just speculation. So uh, stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.